This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on Semicon 2024, Shaping the Semiconductor Future. The participants are Akash Tripathi, CEO, India Semiconductor Mission and Ashok Chandak, Semiconductor Expert. The moderators are Bala Nagendran D, Akashwani Correspondent and Anubha Rathagi, Anchor. The three-day Semicon India 2024 Expo to highlight India's strategy and policy for becoming a global hub for semiconductors was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. To discuss the significance of this event and the semiconductor industry, I am now joined by Akash Tripathi, CEO, Indian Semiconductor Mission, and Mr. Ashok Chandak, President IESA. Mr. Chandak, in his inaugural address today, Prime Minister Modi gave an interesting spin to a very common English phrase, which is when chips are down. And he said, when chips are down, you can bet on India. Of course, the reference here is to the semiconductors, which in common parlance are called chips. So what's your take on the Prime Minister's statement, given that India aims to become a global hub for semiconductors? See, most important point now is where you can build the trust and where you have a resiliency. with regards to the industrial production and activities so he was taking a reference surely that during covid time frame for example one of the key example was many countries the financial transactions and everything got impacted while in india the upi has still worked the activities what was going on was digital transactions and everything did work and the various ceos those were here yesterday in the round table and i can tell you more detail as we go along one of the point there was they indicated they are able to trust india for multifaceted things including the policy the manufacturing resilience as well as the investor friendliness so having said that the overall optimism here comes from the prime minister as a direction to the industry as well so to me it's two ways it's a double edged topic one promising that yes india you can rely on you can bet on you can trust and number two putting the onus and expectations to the industry as well so that they buck up and they plan their all activities so that during the situations of the problems what we have faced sometimes in history historical perspective like covid and other stuff people need to make the planning which is more resilient actually so till date india has secured commitments of over 1.5 lakh crore rupees in investments for manufacturing or for various aspects of semiconductor industry what are the factors that have helped yeah. india in attracting chip manufacturers you know isa is a 18 years old body as a india electronic semiconductor association and last 10 years we have stepped up the efforts of positioning india as a possible marketplace for both electronic semiconductor 7 8 years ago few proposals came up they were announced but nothing moved after that actually learning from that what's happening globally also and the disturbances what world has faced the policy was modified and there are two factors which really help one is the policy which was made production link incentive that gives the substantial benefit to the investor community for a industry as an incentive which takes care of a disability because you know india ecosystem is not fully ready so you have to spend something more extra number 2 because of that the also the indian conglomerate and industries got a good amount of interest into this sector as the demand is going to go up just and given example number as a isa research report what we do the semiconductor demand is 35 billion dollar now which is going to go to 100 billion dollar by 2030 so market is also growing substantially india as well as globally it is going to reach about 1 trillion dollar so that's a sizable opportunity and this is where the indian industrial empires have shown interest on top of that the government pli scheme on top of that the ease of doing business in terms of the approval process flow and fourth factor is a global companies those were not looking at india because of the supply chain disturbances few years ago they start to look at how do you diversify and what is the country where you can bet and trust upon and india came up top on the list so the global companies are willing to do technology transfer they are willing to do the joint ventures that's the fourth factor which adds to the indian entrepreneurs while doing this kind of a programs and fifth there are several states now those are also showing strong interest in a semiconductor sector and they have come out with their own policies so in addition to the central government support there is also state government on ground support which helps the industries to take care of the land the power and a water requirement including the you know manpower and other stuff so all these five factors put together 
you see a very well architected support system which helps the industries to live with the current challenges what we have as ecosystem is not ready and move forward this is the i see yes. as a very important step over here the government launched the indian semiconductor mission or the ism in 2021 and it announced a 76000 crore rupee chip incentive scheme it is also offering a 50% subsidy on capital expenditure for setting up plants how significant right. are these incentives along with all the other factors that you have mentioned this is very significant portion actually because if you get 50% subsidy you are reducing your capex which is the biggest cost factor actually because some of the plants are 3300 crores up to 10 billion dollar which is almost 80000 crores and some of the new generation plants you know you need at least 5 to 10 billion dollar to set the foundry or fab facility so any incentive that comes from the government reduces the capex burden that the investor has to bring number 2 is in addition to this when the state governments are ready to put a roll a red carpet to give you all necessary support faster approvals and taking care of the other challenges you find that this becomes a very very point of attraction and this is where i would call the india semiconductor mission and the ministry of electronic it has done an incredible job in formulating the right policies getting the approvals done from the cabinet as well as the finance ministry the financial allocation uh, and marketed it well to the prospective investors and look at i will give you example how effective is this when we had this event semicon india event now this year we have more than 600 exhibitors those are set up their booths and stall talk about their product solutions and technologies there are more than 100 global companies those are participating their representatives be managers or a cxos they have come to india and they also had the meetings with the ministry and a pm and i can tell you as we go along in the discussion here so this is really helping out the ism has been highly successful i call i call it has created a highly positive atmosphere in indian conglomerate as well as the global companies to attract them finally the success factor coming in at the moment india's electronics sector is worth about 150 billion dollars and the country is targeting a 500 billion dollar size for its electronics sector by the end of this decade what are the challenges that we must address if we want to achieve this target the point is the globally the demand for electronics is growing so as in india so demand will grow the question is how much of that demand we are able to fulfill locally and how much of the demand we can look at as an exports model actually and that is what is going to make the difference we have seen recently successes from attracting the manufacturing activity from global players those are doing the manufacturing not only for india because it's one of the largest mobile market but also for global marketplace so if we do things right and i will clarify what are those if we do things right we will be able to address the domestic demand which is increasing substantially we will be able to address the global demand to be fulfilled by the products those are manufacturing in india now what needs to be done more the first step is done there has been a pli again the production link incentive for electronics manufacturing and that has helped some of the electronic manufacturing services companies to step up so this is gone this is done but my view is this is not good enough because currently most of the electronics manufacturing in india is a low value addition the value addition we see is less than 18% 18 while we should be looking at at least 40 to 50% as a value addition because if we do not have value addition that means we are just doing the service job the margins are quite limited and then economic value which we keep in the country or the profits which we keep in the country is minuscule and this is where a lot of recommendations have been done the ministry of electronics it is actively looking into this we have been very thankful to the current secretary mr krishnan who has been very receptive on these recommendations what we are indicating is let's create a policy and a approach by which we create india product because most of the margins or a profit is in a product creation almost 40% of the margin model is there so if we create india product which is the india design india ipr india product we retain that profit in india that means the economic value remains in the country it doesn't go out that is one point number 2 all electronic product needs a lot of electronic components the simple one called resistor capacitor inductor the connector the pcb these are well known name everybody knows and these are still import and to manufacture these products in india you don't need billions of dollars of investment you can put 50 crore 100 crore 200 crore get the plant operational if you get a joint venture partner technology from somebody we can get moving so this is what we are pushing now to create this kind of a scenario where these things are manufactured in india today most of these are coming as a kit 
So once we start doing this local component manufacturing, this creates a value add. And once you create value add, it's a spiral effect. Create more economic value, you can reinvest and expand. And if we become more competitive, that means we will be able to do the exports. Mr. Akash Tripathi, take us through the highlights of today and what are we about to expect in the coming days? Semicon year 2024. So we had earlier uh, two editions in 22 and 23, but uh, this time the scale is much much bigger, and we have participation of all the global semiconductor ecosystem companies. The top leadership of most of the global semiconductor companies is here. Meaningful the interactions now. We have approved five projects in semiconductor manufacturing. So we need to have the whole ecosystem in India. Events like Semicon and participation of all the global players. A lot of synergies, collaboration, and partnership. Uh, expected to develop so that our manufacturing projects can go live take us through how this transformation has become possible and what are the outcomes that would be in years down the line once we become the global hub of chip making so electronics manufacturing including the mobile manufacturing we have had the significant strides in the recent years the honorable prime minister mentioned in mobile phones we are now the second largest producer of mobile phones and we have uh, big companies like apple uh, mobile phones that are being manufactured here Similarly in semiconductors we have huge market by 2030 out of total expected demand of uh, semiconductors of 1 trillion dollar about 10% of that semiconductor demand would be in India that's uh, about 110 billion dollars so we'll not only be becoming the self reliant semiconductor there's a huge potential that with these projects coming into will be able to even export chips outside could you tell us the purpose behind the indian semiconductor mission and you being one of the front runners in various e governance projects as well how the indian semiconductor mission is expected to perform in the future as the private sector participation is also growing up in the sector so semiconductor manufacturing is a very complex manufacturing not a very easy kind of a technology so for that and it's very very capex in- intensive so we needed to support it in a major way so that this industry can grow in india so in under india semiconductor mission we have a specific policy called semicon india in that policy we provide the support 50% part of fiscal support of the eligible project cost for uh, silicon fab compound semiconductor fab display fab sensor and mems fab osets and atmps these are all the components which we support of semiconductor manufacturing through india semiconductor mission under the semicon india program total outlay for this program is 76000 crore approximately 10 billion dollar so far we have proved five projects and the combined investment of uh, these five projects would be 152000 crore about 18 billion dollar The Prime Minister has said that India and US are closely cooperating in this sector. As far as reports received, 250 companies across 24 countries have been participating in the Semicon India 2024. So could you take us through the international collaborations that India is aspiring to achieve? So we have had the collaboration with all the major global players who are into semiconductor. We have MOU with US, we have memorandum of cooperation with Japan, with Singapore and with the European Union also and in some other countries we are under discussion. So we are collaborating in the field of R&D, skilling and also we are looking at B2B interactions and securing technologies and investment from global companies. So could you tell us how the integration of critical minerals into semiconductor industry is going to boost India's participation and being the global hub of semiconductors as we aspire to achieve So the semiconductor industry there has been uh, many transformations and the latest transformation is the compound semiconductor so we have now silicon carbide we have gallium nitride we have gallium arsenide and there are new materials like graphene which are coming up so the, these materials are very crucial to performance of semiconductor so in future material industry grow as the technology grow and we find that using different material increases the efficiency then we need to switch to that kind of a material for the semiconductor so this critical mineral industry is very very crucial to our semiconductor industry growth and since we are focusing specifically on critical minerals that includes the semiconductor materials i think uh, it will only complement uh, our semiconductor mission thank you so much for joining us in this very informative discussion you were listening to a discussion on semicon 2024 shaping the semiconductor future the participants were Akash Tripathi CEO India Semiconductor Mission and Ashok Chandak Semiconductor Expert the moderators were Bala Nagendran D Akashwani correspondent and Anubha Rothagi anchor this program was produced and presented by the news services division of Akashwani